Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Virkod from Mumbai, India. In this module on hysteroscopy, I am going to focus on the clinical aspects with special reference to showing interesting findings on hysteroscopy and technical minutiae of some common operative procedures. In the end, I will give some tips and tricks regarding hysteroscopy. In this modern era, performing dilatation and curettage alone is like living in the dark ages. DNC is a blind procedure and gives inadequate sample. A study by Kanpur et al. showed that dilatation and curettage gives only 4 to 20 percent specimen yield with inadequate tissues for histopathology. Submucosal endometrial polyps and fibroids are also missed and if diagnosed, difficult to remove completely. The risk of perforation is also higher. Therefore, most modern gynecologists prefer to perform hysteroscopy along with DNC. Some have gone so far as to say DNC should stand for dead and cremated. The credit for performing the first hysteroscopy goes to Pantaleoni in 1869. He first performed this novel procedure on a 60-year-old lady with treatment-resistant menstrual bleeding and detected a polypoidal growth in the uterine cavity. The polyp was cauterized with silver nitrate. In this first module, I will quickly cover the general aspects of hysteroscopy. I am going to cover this entire module under the following subheadings. Section 1. General Aspects that include indications, contraindications, and complications. Section 2, Equipment. Section 3, Fluid Dynamics. Section 4, Technical Minutiae. This is perhaps the most important section in the entire module. Section 5, Virtual Tour with Pictures. Section 6, Hysteroscopy Videos. This is also going to be an interesting section. In the end, based on my personal experience, in Section 7, I will give a few tips and tricks regarding the procedure. In this first section, I will quickly cover the general aspects of hysteroscopy. Hysteroscopy is of two types, diagnostic and operative. In fact, both can be done at the same time. What we call see and treat approach, which is preferred nowadays. Diagnostic hysteroscopy is used to evaluate the endocervical canal, endometrial cavity and tubal ostia. The procedure is often coupled with site-directed biopsy or followed by global endometrial curettage to evaluate for endometrial pathology. Diagnostic indications in a patient with infertility are routine along with laparoscopy to find out the patency of the fallopian tubes and to evaluate the uterine cavity. Suspected Mullerian anomalies suspected adhesions, polyps, and thin endometrium. Prior to IVF procedure, previous IVF failure, the operative indications for hysteroscopy are polypectomy, myomectomy, adhesiolysis, septum resection, and cannulation of the tube for proximal tubal block. Indications for non-infertility cases are diagnostic, abnormal uterine bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding, postcoital bleeding, abnormal pelvic ultrasound findings such as endometrial polyps, submucous fibroids, suspected endometrial carcinoma where a directed biopsy is preferred. Operative indications are polypectomy, myomectomy, adhesiolysis, removal of a foreign body such as intrauterine device or retained products of conception like fetal bones. Hysteroscopic tubal sterilization using certain devices was done in the past but is now rarely performed. Absolute contraindications for hysteroscopy are invasive carcinoma of cervix, acute pelvic inflammatory disease, pyometra, active genital herpes, viable pregnancy, and inadequate experience. Active menstrual bleeding and bleeding diastasis are relative contraindications. For a postmenopausal woman, diagnostic hysteroscopy is best performed during the early proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle. But in actual practice, we do it at any time of the cycle. 
some gynecologists advocate premenstrual laparoscopic dilatation and curettage for infertility patient this helps in confirmation of ovulation if the hp report of curated endometrium shows secretory phase visualization of corpus luteum on laparoscopy also helps for patients with significantly thickened endometrial tissue pharmacological thinning of the uterine lining may be indicated to facilitate insertion of the histoscope and visualization of endometrium insertion of vaginal mesoprostol 400 micrograms previous night to facilitate easy cervical dilatation is preferred especially in nulliparous and postmenopausal patient mesoprostol softens the cervix and facilitates an easier entry of histoscope into the cervix when performing hysteroscopy cervical dilatation is not always necessary small diameter hysteroscopes which are ideal for diagnostic purposes can be inserted directly into the cervical canal without dilatation they are inserted through the vagina and external os is visualized and then under vision the tip of the hysteroscope is directed to the straight or tortuous cervical canal this is called vaginoscopy A major advantage of vaginoscopy is that no speculum insertion and no anesthesia is required and thus hysteroscopy can be performed as an office procedure under ambulatory setting this has made hysteroscopy an opd procedure on par with per vaginal examination for larger diameter hysteroscopes however a speculum and a tenaculum are used for cervical traction and dilatation prior to hysteroscope insertion complications arising from hysteroscopy are rare but can become serious if left unrecognized the most common complications are vasovagal reaction cervical laceration false passage uterine perforation and bleeding other rare but morbid complications are air or carbon dioxide embolism post operative infections and severe electrolyte disturbances which may sometimes lead to coma or death use of monopolar or bipolar instruments for operative hysteroscopy especially monopolar devices increases the risk of electrosurgical injury failure that is inability to perform hysteroscopy because of complications like false passage excessive bleeding etc have been reported the percentages of complications in brackets are from a multicentric study by jansen the reference is given below perforations are most likely when the uterine body is acutely antiflex or acutely retroflex as depicted in these diagram in an acutely antiflexed uterus perforation will involve posterior wall of the uterus whereas in an acutely retroflexed uterus the anterior wall will get perforated to prevent this complication it is essential to apply sufficient traction on the cervix prior to inserting the scope in order to straighten the uterocervical canal Please note even after straightening uterocervical canal fundal perforation can occur but this is highly unlikely because one is introducing the scope under vision during hysteroscopy perforation of uterus occurs more due to instruments like uterine sound or cervical dilators than hysteroscope itself if excessive bleeding occurs during hysteroscopy it can be managed by inserting a pediatric number 12 foley catheter and inflating the balloon to give tamponade effect accidental thermal injury from capacitive coupling releasing stray currents into neighboring non targeted tissues during operative hysteroscopy is another complication the risk is lower with bipolar devices as compared to older monopolar devices application of current only during contact with tissues to be removed is another important preventive measure surgeon's spatial orientation and hand eye coordination is a time acquired skill that will go long way in avoiding this medical legal complication not just the surgeon but the entire surgical team should have a good understanding of the biophysics of electrosurgery early recognition of the injury with in time salvage treatment and alertness to post operative warning signs can help reduce such complications uterine instrumentation be it curate or operative hysteroscope is the main cause of intrauterine adhesions damage or excision of basal layer of endometrium is the main reason 
lack of vascular stromal tissue leads to hypoxia that prevents post operative regeneration of endometrium which is replaced by fibrous tissue referred to as adhesions intrauterine adhesions seem to be frequent and major long term complication in patients who undergo hysteroscopic surgery for certain diseases like submucosal myoma excision adhesiolysis excision of septum or fibrosis of intrauterine cavity many strategies or principles for decreasing the risk of developing intrauterine adhesions such as reduced use of electro surgery and minimization of trauma to the healthy endometrium and myometrium have been proposed post operative treatment measures include use of estrogen orally or insertion of foley's balloon for a few weeks some endoscopy experts recommend a repeat hysteroscopy few days after initial operative procedure to lyse the adhesions before they get fibrosed anti adhesive gels such as hyaluronic acid gel can be used and have significant clinical effect on intrauterine adhesion prevention however their effect on further pregnancy rate is unknown if you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology please refer to my books modern gynecology modern obstetrics and practical obstetrics and gynecology and other books for purchase inquiries contact me on this whatsapp number i have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students these are clinical cases in obstetrics 1000 plus questions and answers and clinical cases in gynecology 1000 plus questions and answers you can also follow me on other social media platforms like facebook or meta blogspot and instagram the links are given here if you enjoyed this video hit the like button share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you for watching